What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of a blood a thirsty um, coming up on uh, arriving in theaters and on demand April 23rd, and I'm here talking with the writing team of this new horror thriller film, Wendy and Lal. How are you, Wendy and Lal? Great. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, this is an interesting take on werewolves, and equally interesting is this mother-daughter duo. Um, how does that collaboration work? Um, Lol, I understand you composed the songs as well. So both of you writing the script, uh, did the songs kind of get incorporated as you were writing the scripts or did that come later on? How did that work exactly? Yeah, it kind of happened as we went. We were writing and rewriting the script over the course of several years. And so, um, you know, at times, I might have written a song to go in one part and then changed my mind a year later and thought, you know, there's not enough growth here or something. So um, it was definitely a gradual overtime process. Growth is a really good word for it because what was really important was to have the growth of the lead character, Gray, mm. show in the songs. That was critical to the film being working really. So we wrote like, so Lowell was writing the songs as we wrote, wrote the script because it had to show the progress of the character over time and how her music and art changed as she became more empowered and I guess became a werewolf. And what was the inspiration behind Bloodthirsty? Uh, of all the lores, of all the creatures, of all the myths, urban legends, why did you guys decide to take on werewolves specifically? Um, so it actually started as a ghost story um, mm. and uh, I've always had a, a connection with wolves and I was actually writing a, an album called Lone Wolf at the time and so we had kind of um, originally thought that the film would be called Lone Wolf and we were incorporating wolves but we hadn't done it literally yet and then as we went on we realized that it was obviously a werewolf story and then we rewrote the whole script again uh, using that as a concept but yeah interestingly enough it wasn't originally going to be that but it was such a perfect way to tie the whole story together this like um this internal struggle with art and then this also physical struggle with gray the main character who's a werewolf and and so it, it turned out really beautiful in the end i think it was a perfect combination in the end like i was never happy with the the, the ghost story in a way, it just, we kept working on it. It just never got better. Like, and as soon as we made, as soon as we came up with the concept of Grey, at the same time, she was struggling with her art, struggling with her own being hmm. and tied that together with this woman who was half werewolf and half human, everything came together. Like from that moment on, the script started to work for me. Uh, I think one of the most fascinating things about this movie is the evolution of Grey, her transformation into a werewolf that comes in mostly in dreamscapes and nightmares. Uh, but what did you think of the casting of Lauren Beatty and her performance as Grey in this film? Did she check all the boxes that you had in mind when you both wrote the script? Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I was so impressed with Lauren right away when we, you know, it's a small production. So we were looking, we were doing a lot of the casting, just us. And um, she definitely immediately was the right character. She'd also worked with Amelia, the director before. And so um, they already had a relationship. She was just kind of perfect for it. Um, it the film is also kind of autobiographical and she doesn't not look like me. <laughs> so maybe that also checked a box, but um yeah I was I mean I think she was incredible in it when yeah she I mean um I think Lola and I the first time we saw an audition with her that Amelia had arranged we liked her and um she came back for a second audition and I think at that point we were all totally convinced she was she was great and I thought she did a wonderful performance emotionally um, with the character and uh, with the growth of the character over over the course of the film and um, um, yeah to me she was she just was perfect. Lol, I'm curious how many songs did you write for this film how many that actually made it into the film? Um, actually I guess 
all of the songs that I wrote for the film made into the film. Um, mostly because I'm a pretty good editor myself, so I wouldn't have sent something through that I didn't think would be perfect for it. But, um, but yeah, a couple. There were two songs that were already written that mm. went into it, and uh, I had written them a while back, so they felt like the right songs to kind of uh show like a younger songwriter and then the the newer songs like bloodthirsty the single from the film was a new song that i had written as a what i would consider a more mature or grown songwriter and you know greta's song too which is kind of a very haunting i think song she wrote specifically for the character of greta um for that film too and then uh i just wanted to mention that we're coming out with an ep um in a week which is going to have four songs from the film. Bloodthirsty, of course, the title song with, um, these are all sung by Lowell uh, for the EP. So, um, and, uh, you know, Loving You to Death, which is Greta's song. Uh, God is a Fascist and Lemonade. Uh, looking forward to those, definitely. So what is the underlying theme of Bloodthirsty? I know that on the surface, it's, it's a carnal transformation and this earth shattering familial revelation. But what is the theme that you wanted to convey that you wanted the audiences to, to take away from Bloodthirsty? Well, um, I mean, you know, for me, it was interesting writing it because one could see, I mean, we were playing with a number of things. One was the way we, we went against the grain a little bit in terms of how werewolves usually look on films historically. And we wanted to play with that. So we tried to make the werewolves more beautiful. Like they're not hairy and kind of, you know, whatever. I mean, they're, and they're a little bit more wolf-like. Um, mm. So we were playing with that. But I think, um, you know, for me, interestingly writing it, like you could see, you know, and I read a lot about werewolf, you know, folklore and that. You could see them as kind of evil as they were seen, as witches were seen. And they were hunted down and um, people were, you know, killed for being supposedly werewolves and stuff. And, um, you could see them that way, but for me, they were beautiful animals. They're animals, just like a lion's an animal and they go after their prey. So I was really working on trying to make, sounds weird, the werewolf sympathetic, like, you know, they, because they're doing what they are. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so that was, so thematically to me, it was very much about be, being who you are, being true to who you are. And that was reflected in, Gray's growth as an artist, that as she became more who she was, her music became more powerful and beautiful. Yeah, so I, I think that, I mean, it's obviously a feminist take on um, the traditional werewolf uh, theme, but it, it also was a character story about art and growth and how art can consume you, how creating art can consume you. And um, also being a, a young woman trying to pursue your dreams in music, film, uh, in a, a man's world. And um, yeah, I think it was a, you know, a mix of all of those things. It's a very complex story, uh, character story, as, long as, as well as horror. And finally, generally speaking, um, is it easier or is it harder to work with a family member on a movie project. Some say it's harder because you know the person all too well. And is yours a team up that's gonna continue moving forward? Uh, I mean, I loved working with my daughter, so I can say that. I mean, we definitely had some challenges along the way, um, partly to do with her schedule. She, between the time we started and the time we finished, Lowell's songwriting career took, took off. So she was doing all these huge songs with pop writers and stuff. And um, it just sort of consumed her. So it was really hard because filmmaking is really time consuming. And, uh, you know, so I think that was our biggest challenge, but um, it was also, it was a really neat experience. I, I think we were very lucky. I don't think a lot of mother daughters or maybe father sons or other daughters get to do this. Like, because art is so important to us. Like we're both creative people, but in, you know, different industries really. But to bring those two together, music and film was really, um, I think it'll be a highlight for me. 
yeah it definitely brought us closer and it, it made me um have this huge understanding for my mom that I never had before and I think vice versa and um yeah I hope that we do get to do something again together because it was really special you know um we live across the country from each other so it, it was a great way to bring us together I do have to apologize to my mom because uh I feel like I usually have more of a filter maybe when I'm talking to people that I work with whereas when I'm talking to my mom I just talk to her like a teenager <laughs> <laughs> but other than that I think it did bring us closer totally understandable and uh for my fans at home everybody go check out bloodthirsty arriving in select theaters and on demand april 23 wendy and lol thank you for talking to me and congratulations thank you so much